Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy. And thanks for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Night Force NX8 1 to 8 LPVO. That was a mouthful. Um, but this is an exciting episode because we've got Roy back yeah. uh, on the channel Glad again. Glad to be back. Yep. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, so um, we are gonna be covering kind of our review on this. We had it for um we've had it for a while now. We've had it for a while. Yeah. I want to say it's like last year in the fall, early fall, maybe August. Yeah, August probably about last that. year. So a lot of time, a lot of rounds behind it. Um, we really wanted to get an in-depth amount of time on this thing. We will say disclaimer. Yeah, so f- funny thing about this. So we were, we were sitting in the shop, and I told Eric, I said, I said, man, I really want to try another LPVO. And I was like, why? Exactly. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so I'm sitting there and rolling through Optics Planet, mm-hmm. and I have this thing sitting in my cart. And I'm about ready to go through the checkout process. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, what is our discount code through Optics Planet? Yeah. Okay. And uh, he's like, what, do, what Optics Planet wants to send us something. So what are you looking for? And yeah. I'm like, hey, I, I want an NX8. So this was provided to us by Optics Planet. So our friends over at Optics Planet definitely hooked us up with this. Yeah. This was going to be one that I was going to purchase. Yeah. And most likely, spoiler alert, probably will purchase another one. Yeah. So uh, we, we like this scope enough where it's probably worth buying in another one. Well, which is crazy because for if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know that we're not huge LPVO people. We no. usually prefer like a 2 to 10 type yep. scope or something like that. Yeah. So. I think this one fits um, fits kind of like the mold of what, what ideally I'm looking for in a low-power variable. Right. So. So, yeah, like I said, this is sponsored by Optics Planet, uh, so thank you for that. They are the sponsor of this specific episode. Um, But let's just jump into the specs real quick. So we'll grab some specs on this thing. All right, so we're just going to start. Obviously, it's a 1 to 8 front focal plane, Mm. 30 millimeter tube. Yeah, it is the mill reticle, which I do believe they call the DMX. The DMX, yeah, because there's there's two different mill reticles, isn't there? Yeah, kind of like the wrapper, DMX. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Uh, rest in peace. <laughs> rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, overall length, 8.7 inches. Uh, that's honestly part part of um, my appeal to yeah. it as far as why why it kind of fits the mold of what we're looking for. Yeah. Uh, really, when when I'm looking, if I'm going to go to something that you, you look at some of the 1 to 10s that are out there on the market, you look at some of the other LPVOs, they start to increase in size. So that's, that's one of the things that we obviously liked about the primary arms. Yeah. Was that, uh, was the size of it. But then you start looking at some of the other ones on the market, and they they, they start to weigh the same amount, mm-hmm. and they are relatively very close in the same overall length and size as what our two to ten credo is, our beloved two to ten credo. By the way, if you'd like to see an update on that video, let us know. We've been ta- kicking around the idea. We can still get a lot of questions on that. Yeah, I and mean, we did that video two years ago. Yeah, so two years ago. It'd be time, good time for an update. But yeah, I mean, I, I, the biggest thing is like. If we're going, the LPVO for us is mostly like the size and then the 1X capability, which honestly, we don't really use that much. And that's why we've always been going to the 2 to 10, because we always mount a red dot as our reflex optic on the gun. So whenever we have an LPVO, we're specifically looking at size and weight that is the massive pro that outweighs like, or that is more of a benefit than like a 2 to 10, because we can go smaller. So when you have an LPVO that's really big, and a low, like one to six or like a one to eight, but it's huge. It's almost kind of, you know, counterproductive in our opinion. Yeah. So, um, 8.7 inches in overall length, um, weight 7.17.3. So relatively very light. The click value is a little bit different, um, than what, what I'm used to. It's 0.2 instead of 0.1. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a little different. So it took a little bit to get used to that. Uh, did we dial this scope? Yes, I actually did dial this scope. Yeah. Um, a, I shot a match with it. Uh, quantified precision. Is that what it? Quantified Quanti- performance. Yeah, quantified performance. Yeah. So I shot a match with it, mounted it that morning of the match, zeroed it that morning, lost the scope cap cover. That morning? That morning. <laughs> and basically proceeded the day of, we, we actually still don't have the scope cap cover on it, do we? Yeah. So Got to order it. We can contact Night Force up. I'm sure they'll send us one so, or let us buy one. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so I did dial with it. A little strange uh, for point two, but I get it. It's a fighting scope. It's not a precision scope. So yeah. uh, got used to it relatively pretty quick. Which I think, uh, you know, you talk about the precision scopes side of it, but the 
the reticle is actually very nice. And that's, that was a big draw for us is we were always big on reticles. And if they're too, you know, with combat quote unquote optics, you have where the reticles are too fat and cover up too much of the target, which this one did not do. Yeah. So um, reticle wise goes, it drops down in you know one mil increments. Yeah. So so you pretty much you you at least have a number for a letter for for reference point two four six you know and so on as we go down. So that's really nice, um, easy, relatively very quick to get back on target with. Yeah. So so that is the you know kind of nitty gritty, the most important part of specs when we're looking for, and then outside of that would be the price point. Yeah. Scope's probably running. I do believe if you jump on Optics Planet, I think it's around that seventeen eighty to eighteen hundred. Don't you know? Don't hold me to it. We can obviously roll that across the screen. Yeah. I think they actually have some type of promotion going right now, where you get like a uh, magnifier or something like that. Yeah, so. which is interesting. I think it clips onto the front, so you yeah. get a little bit more magnification. Yep. I've never even seen that before. No. So interesting. Um, would be curious, you know, to try that out on it to see kind of how that works. Yeah, I think the other color they have is that golden or that bronze. But I mean, like if you're going to be like us we paint everything so it really doesn't matter uh if, if color doesn't matter to you you can save some money yeah i do that. believe the bronze is a little bit more yeah so. so i mean i think what was your initial thoughts that were immediately standing out to you when you got the scope that you were like holy smokes this is i love this system because of these things honestly the the size of it yeah. i mean it's like i can i can i can be dissatisfied with certain things just because of, of, of what it weighs and then the footprint and it's very fitting uh we talk about uh obviously you know things have to be appealing looking they gotta it's gotta look good too at yeah, the same yeah, time it can't it, yeah. it can't look out of place you, you you know we have it on a 16 inch gun right here it looks really good on a 16 inch gun it also looks really good on a 12 yeah it does so it's not it's not overly too big or anything like that they give you a nice throw level Throw lever. Lever. Yeah, lever. Leveler. Leveler. <laughs> throw level. Level. Leveler. <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> back to normal. Welcome yeah, back, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Make up some words. Yeah, making up words as we go. All right. Um, turrets typically are capped. Obviously, I lost one of the caps. That being said, they are tight enough where through this entire process, like, a, like literally I lost this the first weekend that we had it. Yeah. So we, I, it came in on a Friday. Yeah, came in on a Friday. Went out. Didn't I, no, I didn't shoot Saturday at all. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then the match was on Sunday because yeah. there was a Saturday Sunday match. Right. I didn't shoot Saturdays. Shot Sundays, and mounted it up while I was at the ranch. And it fell off actually in the first stage because I didn't tighten anything down because yeah. I was in such a hurry. Uh. Mounted it back up. Re zeroed it during the match and finish shooting the rest yeah. of the match. You know, I never had an issue with uh, with the with the turret actually skipping around or anything like that. So yeah. it's it's nice and tight. Yeah, so. never bumped it. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, like what you were saying, the size of that is is a big one. And I think that um, as far as the, you know, we had a I had one dude that commented and he was talking about the attacker specifically. Um, and you know, he his his argument was that if you have an LPVO, it's better to have a thirty four millimeter tube versus a 30 mil what are your thoughts on that um i'm gonna be honest with you it, i don't think personally i don't i really don't think it matters that much um if if the scope fits your needs right okay if you're you're the individual that find that you have to have that then then go to the attacker mm -hmm. but i found like this scope fit all the needs that i was looking for it gave me enough magnification that i could identify targets at distance yeah I ran it out to 890 yeah. during the match mm -hmm. got my hits at 890 the reticle is not too large at full magnification being that it's a front focal plane so yeah. we do find that sometimes where the reticle that was actually one of my complaints with the um with the uh, primary arms yeah. uh great scope love the scope fantastic one power mm -hmm. as we got up into the eight power the reticle became kind of large and it was covering up complete size targets at 800 900 yards basically uh, actually, even 600 yards would cover up an entire target. This scope right here, I could I could still see the target with a reticle placed over top of it at you know 890 yards, 900 yards. So, right. so reticle fit me fine. It pretty much basically hit all the checkbox as far as what I need to be effective. Right. With it, 
Um, so as far as needing a 34 millimeter tube, I don't, I don't, I don't, I guess if, if it's something that you want, yeah, go ahead. But I think it's, I think for me, it's just the weight. Like we run attackers mm -hmm. at my unit. Um, so we run them on our, you know, those rifles and, and so common stuff has the 34 mil, but it's a big scope. Like it's, it's heavy. It's bigger. Yes. You get that better like eye box, but at the end of the day, it's almost like I'd rather have a two to 10 on there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I think for the LPVO, this one is so nice because of the size, the weight, the reticle really, I think made this for me. And that was something that, you know, like we always talk about a reticle makes or breaks an optic. And so this reticle was super easy to get used to mm -hmm. there are some optics where you have reticles where they, they it just it takes too much time to get used yep. to it or it's you have to kind of jump through some hoops to try and figure out to make your brain connect with when you're trying to hold it's things at speed or doing multiple targets at multiple distances it's it's kind of hard jumping around you lose your place in that reticle. yeah it's uh there's enough spacing in between all of the uh all of the wind holds mm -hmm. Uh, where you can you can you can see everything nice and clear. Now here is a quick word from our sponsor, Exothermic Technologies. Exothermic has two different pulse fire flamethrowers. One is the LRT, the other one is the UBF. They are both gasoline fueled. If you do a diesel and gasoline mixture, it allows the diesel to keep the fire going until the target is definitely toasted. They're both battery powered and they have a rechargeable battery pack that comes with them. You can also use both of these systems in conjunction with the Pulse Fire Backpack Kit so you have extended flame time with both units. The underbarrel system mounts to the bottom of any Picatinny rail, or you can also use the handle that comes along with it to have it as a standalone unit. The cool thing is they both use the Arc Ignition System, which is a patent pending electric ignition to keep the flamethrower going whenever you're using it and make it more reliable. It does have a built-in valve at the end of it to prevent any leftover fuel in the reservoir from dripping out. The big thing you gotta consider is the wind. Like any flamethrower, you gotta make sure you take that into consideration. If anything is wrong with the flamethrower, you can get the parts replaced with the warranty program that comes with it. And this tool is especially good for things like lighting bonfires, snow, getting rid of ice, also getting rid of weeds or insect hives that you don't wanna get close to. You can also use it for agricultural purposes, for land management. And I've even seen some videographers and photographers use it for special effects for their films or photos. So it is a really, really useful tool and something to be considered about. Whenever you want to get one, go check our description below for a discount code to save 20% on any accessories that come with the exothermic flamethrower. Yeah. So it's not, it's not too cluttered. Yeah. Okay. Um, as we get into the reticles that are a little bit more cluttered and give you a little bit more information and stuff like that, then then obviously I'm running that on a different system. I'm running that on a more of a precision system. Right. And that's that scope is designed behind that. Okay. Uh, we do find sometimes where manufacturers will create something like a LPVO in a first focal plane. We've talked about this before in the past, and they and they start to overload it. Yeah. And then as you're on that top side of that magnification, it's just it's just there's too much going on there. And you can't move quick enough. It, it becomes confusing. Right. Like your brain can't process everything that it has. This is into, you know, as far as the numbers wise goes, as far as quick reference, as far as like, you know, jumping down on it and then two mil increments, you can, you can roll through it pretty quick. So, uh, honestly, within probably the first 30 minutes of shooting it, I was kind of, I was kind of hooked. Mm -hmm. Then it was like just a, from a robustness, yeah. reliability standpoint, is it going to break? Right. Um, and I think, I think it's a testament to, you know, um, weather conditions. We shot a match in the rain with it. Um, and you know, not running capped once again, because like I said earlier, I lost the cap to it. Definitely have bumped this in the process, running it off of barricades and everything else like that. No, no, no issues. So, uh, I, I've actually been really, really happy with it. I think the biggest common theme we can say about the NX8, I think for both of us is it's a scope that it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. Everything about the optic makes sense. You yep. know, like the reticle makes sense. It's not too busy. It's not too cluttered. The other thing is it's not too simple. Yep. You know, even though it's a combat it's got optic. Enough, it has enough it's information enough. where, you know, uh, if you're running your Mark 12 with your 3 to 15 Steiner on it, which you have obviously significantly more information in your reticle, uh, more capability with the rifle as itself, uh, with, the, with the correct ammo, I can still, I can still spot or call you know um we can still talk in the same language 
I yeah. can still, yeah, there's enough information there that I can, I can still help out along with that. So yeah. I, I think it's a, I think it's a good partnering scope. Yeah. Um, you know, for someone, you know, in your, in your community or within your group that might be, you know, it's, it's a good fighting scope. That's yeah. what it is. It's, a, it's a good rifleman scope. It's a, it's a scope that pretty much almost anyone probably that has a baseline understanding of a mill reticle can go out and, and start running and shoot. And if you don't understand our mill reticle, obviously you can take a co scope carbine class with us yeah. and we can help you out with that. There's obviously other mini instructors out there that teach a really, really good scope carbine class also. You can check those guys out. Um, we can always send you some recommendations with those too. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it just, it really does check all the boxes for me. So I think it's something that it's, like you said, it's it's small enough and rugged enough and makes sense enough to be on a fighting carbine, but at the same time, you could throw it on a Mark 12 and still be precise with it and do some precision yeah. work. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I mean, we're running on our 16-inch uh, uh, test barrels from Roscoe Manufacturer, which mm -hmm. that barrel is, you know, teaser. It's 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 freaking accurate. It's yeah. attack driver, so we've been super. And that's not just saying because they slapped our name on the side of it. Yeah. Um, it's we, we, we did a lot of testing on this because yeah. it was one of those things where we wanted to make sure that one, reliability, but two, the accuracy standard. Um, and yeah, and we've even handed it out to some of the other guys in the community Yeah, that spent a lot of time behind a rifle. You know, Eric and I, mm -hmm. we, we spent a lot of time behind a rifle, but we also tend to jump in behind a pistol for, you know, for good periods of time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, we have, we have a few guys that just, you know, Hey, you know what? I'm going to shoot. Yeah. I'm going to shoot a rifle. Yeah. And they spent a lot of time. They spent a lot of time practicing. Some of those guys are better shooters than we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we've handed it off to them to get their opinion. And same thing with that scope. Um, we we had one of our one of our buddies uh, actually shot a class with it, mm -hmm. right, with that yeah. scope. Uh, his feedback on it was, too, that he loved it. He yeah. liked it. So yeah. I get a lot. That's, uh, that's something I think they're actually releasing this barrel at SHOT Show, or is when they're announcing it. So uh, just kind of stay tuned. We'll give you guys updates on when that's going to be released. But um, the cool thing, I think the biggest thing about this barrel is the intermediate gas system. So it's in between mid-length and rifle length. So yeah. can you talk about what that does? I know it's kind of going off track. Yeah, I mean, um, without without going super into the science and everything else like that, um, basically it's just it's giving you a longer um longer length gas system it's a it's it's kind of very similar to like what you would see companies like knight's armament or somebody like that running it's not exactly the same as their the intermediate gas link there's been other companies in the past that is experimenting around with it i've always really liked it for the 16 inch barrel okay uh 14 5 13 9 love the mid length on it mm -hmm. as long as it's ported correctly not over gassed or anything like that but on the 16 there's a little bit more room to quit, cut back on some of that dwell time um so you can extend that gas block forward a little bit the rifle length becomes entirely too picky yes you can run a rifle length in a 16 inch barrel i've i've done it before i've taken rifle link guns and, and chopped them down um rifle length you start getting around below that 17 17 and a half roughly then they the gun becomes too picky mm. okay the intermediate still allows you to have enough dwell time to create enough back pressure to be reliable so i i honestly believe that the intermediate or very similar gas link systems to the intermediate in a 16 inch barrel is the way to go um it's 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 going to be a more reliable system. It's going to be a softer shooting gun. Uh, you're typically going to have a more consistent pressure back at the chamber, which is going to create typically more you know a little bit more accuracy or or uh, standardize your deviation a little better. So it's not so extreme, you know, when it comes to your velocity on your rounds because you're not building up the additional pressure back at the chamber. Yeah, yeah, I think, and also having a softer shooting rifle that's appropriately gassed makes it easier for follow-up shots so with this optic it's easy to kind of stay in the tube and mm -hmm. be able to get follow-up shots on that target yeah. um so the one thing i had that was kind of i wouldn't say it's a bad thing it just took some getting used to that was the the three dots so it has the three dots in the reticle and yeah. there's sometimes i would actually pick the wrong dot yep. and i'd go too low or excuse mm -hmm. me i'd pick the dot directly above the center dot so that just comes with time, I think, mm -hmm. and just in practice. Yeah, so you have you have some holdover yes. dots. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I actually experimented with the holdover dots and, uh, and, and just, you know, in a little bit of practice and training. Mm -hmm. And then also I did it in the match. Um, yeah, I, I would say the same thing. Like, uh, I think it's just that's kind of more of a training curve, you know, as you add those into it. But if you're trying to be fast on the gun, sometimes you, you may end up picking up the wrong dot. Yeah especially on your close shots, your, you know, inside 200 yeah. type stuff. But 
one of the things that I that, talking about the reticle that I didn't like is, and it, this may be something with my eyes, it may be a, a my stigmatism or something like that because I do have a relatively bad stigmatism. Um, so all reticles to a certain extent, especially red dots, look very blurry. They you know have that star bursting, that slash that's kind of going across the glass. When I would illuminate this reticle, so it is illuminated. Yeah, it's almost like the illumination didn't line up with the reticle. Oh yeah. So when the backlighting behind it, so it's it it, it plays tricks on your eyes a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that it, that is definitely one of the cons that for me as a shooter. And once again, guys, that could be just 100% user. It could be something to do with my stigmatism. I don't know if you played around uh, with illumination. I, I experienced the same thing. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it, it's almost like it misaligns. And then the other thing that I had an issue with is under quickly grabbing my magnification and i know it has a locking ring for my diopter it would still come loose that, that's for every night force yeah. man so i would end up grabbing the entire thing mm -hmm. and then my you know my diopter and when you're talking about a scope that doesn't have a parallax adjustment yeah. having that diopter set perfect to the shooter uh along with you know um the actual you know hide over board and everything else like that set up to the shooter properly <laughs> really can affect shots yeah. you know so um being that you don't have a parallax you have a fixed parallax i do believe that they say at 125 meters you know so uh you want to make sure everything's dialed in on it so uh, i don't think that you need i'm not saying guys night force does not need to build this scope with a parallax adjustment on it yeah i don't believe that you need a parallax adjustment in a low power variable scope i don't even think that you need a parallax adjustment in a in a um what, what are we calling them now mid power variables two to tens i'm just gonna call on it, hatchet two to ten I'm just, I'm just gonna call it a two to ten <laughs> yeah. um but a mid power variable type scope or something yeah. like that i don't even think that you need a parallax adjustment in that um yeah. is it nice to have it does it hurt to have it no yeah i mean but you don't need it we, that's something that we experienced. We, you know, we initially did the Credo. We mm -hmm. were like, ah, well, it doesn't have parallax adjustment. And then we went to the primary arms, which does. They're yep. two and a half to ten. And we found that having yeah, we were just leaving it set on correct. infinity or set yeah. on a hundred or something like that, whatever it may be. It was an extra so, step yeah. when we were transitioning targets. So Under speed. Under speed. Precision systems? Different. Different. I'm not I'm not going quite as fast. Uh, the, the point behind a gas gun is to get rounds downrange. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, what does Kyle DeFore say? Uh, uh, one round per second yeah. within one meter. Yeah. So yeah. one round per second within one meter. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of the goal. So, um, and I think an optic like this does that. So oh, when you're talking about, when you're talking about a scope carbine system, a fighting rifle, you know, not something that is necessarily, you know, built for precision work. Can you be accurate with it? Yeah, you can have a, you know, this is a, you know, a MOA gun, and sometimes with the right ammo, it's a sub MOA gun. Yeah. Uh, and and the optic will allow you to be that MOA shooter. Yeah. You know, uh, if you are an MOA shooter or sub MOA shooter, and you know, with this particular setup, it, the, that optic complements it quite well. Mm. But it's also an optic that, you know, uh, uh, I would say, I would say personally, I feel like uh, if you if you have a base level understanding of a, of a mill reticle, it's an optic that would fit, you know, more of a newer shooter that has at least taken some time to kind of study the reticle. And that that's really where it comes key mm. when it comes to any kind of optic is, and, and there is no, there, there should be, you're probably going to find whatever your favorite is, is what you spend the most amount of time on. Mm -hmm. We love the Credo for what reason? Because I I've literally have shot the Credo for the past... <laughs> I don't even know how many years. Yeah. Uh, however long the Credo has been out, even, I've owned one. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so <laughs> that's why I love it so much because I've spent so much time behind it, and it's embedded in my brain. I can pick that rifle up, and, and the moment that I sit behind that glass, like I can, I can actually picture the reticle in my head right now because I've seen the reticle so many times. I've studied it so many times. Okay. Uh, the same thing with the Steiner three to fifteen. You've you've been behind that glass so much that you you're used to that reticle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be the same thing with this. You're going to want to get behind the glass. You're going to want to, and that doesn't mean necessarily shooting, guys. I know ammo is expensive right now. You're you're sixty, you know, sixty sixty five cent around. You can get out and do dry fire work with it. Mm -hmm. um, you can sit there in front of your computer screen and just look at the reticle and study the reticle. But that's that's going to be key. Yeah, uh, that really is. Um, you can't you can't give an honest opinion on something until you until you spend enough time behind it. So don't just take our word for it. You know, if this is something that you're interested in buying, obviously, you know, check out Optics Planet. You know, it uh, they help us. It'll help. You know, uh, it helps them as far as um, you know purchasing it through them. But uh, but it it 
you know, it's it's a great scope. I your uh, Nike horse. I love it, man. Yeah. Some people don't like them. I, I love it. What do you love about it? Um, I like how compact it is. Yeah. Uh, I like how uh, I can um, I can count on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that if something's, you know, I, if it gets bumped or whatever, uh, the quality of the scope and the mount, um, I don't have any, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, I like the, I like the, the reticle. Yeah. The center aiming dot is really small. And then if I, um, I can mill out pretty easy. If I need to change my zero, I can just use the, the reticle, see what I need to change. And uh, the dot is daylight bright. Yeah. Um, so I have no, no issues with it. Right. Love it. Yeah, I agree. I love the fan. Very sick. I think it's, I think the best way to put it, like you were saying to caveat on that is the, the scope is good enough where it's worth our investment of time to become familiar with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's worth, it's worth us making this, that a familiar this scope, thing. Um, so, you know, um, when, when a manufacturer sends us something, uh, you know, if they, if they don't provide ammo necessarily to us, um, realistically for, for me and Eric, we, we at least like to get a minimum of about a thousand rounds yeah. behind it. You know, combined. Okay, mm -hmm. just to you know, make sure that it and and that's in hard usage. Yeah. Okay, that's not just like a thousand rounds sitting on a bench. Yeah. That's a thousand rounds running barricades. That's a thousand rounds running, you know, just open gym sessions. That's a you know, sometimes not even not even shooting, just hucking through the woods with it, mm -hmm. bouncing off the trees and vines and everything else like that, just to just to make sure that it's good. Um, that being said, this particular scope, like we 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 realized that we liked it you know, was we're kind of enjoying it. It's like, hey, I want to I want to invest more into this. Mm -hmm. This is probably going to be a scope that I keep, and it's actually probably going to be a scope that I probably buy an additional one. Yeah. So I'm, I'm okay with, you know, going out, and before we do this review, putting three, 4,000 rounds behind that. So, I mean, that's an investment by us. You know, we, we, we're definitely not making money on this video <laughs> you know we have you know we have fifteen hundred dollars two thousand dollars invested in ammo shooting yeah. this shooting this scope uh and not along with uh also at the same time entry fees into matches and yep. you know just physical training time um so there's a, there's a lot of money that that goes into it outside of just buying it yeah so uh and and we've invested that time in it and i think i think that shows Obviously, it's painted, so that yeah. shows something. Oh, it's and now it's, it's fully accepted. Uh, and that's that's something actually. A lot of people ask us, how can we support the channel? That whenever you guys come to classes and you come train with us, that directly supports us. When you become a member and you actually are paid subscription member, or you become a lifetime member, um, that is something that allows us to continue to put in the high round count behind these th these items to help give us a true opinion that you can use for your research if you're deciding to get into this. And that directly you know, goes into stuff like this. So if you do want to support the channel, so that way Roy and I and can keep doing what we're doing and put the same amount of effort into reviewing a product versus just here's a hundred rounds and unboxing review, yep. th you know, that goes directly towards funding that type of um, in-depth review. Also, we appreciate it because this is what we are doing full time now. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, uh, putting food on the table <laughs> helps a lot. It yeah. is putting food yeah. on the table also at the same time. So you guys have been absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in 2024. 2023 was obviously rough for us. 20, so we're starting 2024, you know, off the right way. Yeah. It's been really good so far. We got our new studio, got our new office. Me and Eric are working together every single day. So yeah. that's awesome there. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be putting in the work. And, and, you know, if you guys, like like Eric said, if you guys want to support us, jump on the website, pick up a hat. We got new hats up there for like 17 bucks. We got mm -hmm. some T-shirts up there for $17. We got more T-shirts coming. We got our lifetime membership. Mm -hmm. Sign up for a lifetime membership. It's going to give you two classes the first year. So in the year of 2024, uh, so it's $597. It'll give you two of our classes which that covers obviously that right there. Yeah. So if you plan on already taking two classes with us, if you sign up for a lifetime membership, you're also going to get the benefit of getting one additional class mm -hmm. for the rest of your life from us. Yeah. As long as we're you know around still teaching classes. Yeah. Uh, we'll send you a hat and then we'll also send you a patch. For everybody that has signed up for it, hats and patches just came in. So those will be going out the door here in the next week. Yep. So, um, so thank you to everybody that has signed up. Thank you to everybody that has subscribed. You guys that are on YouTube as far as the paid subscriptions, stuff like that. Uh, look forward to seeing more content.
from yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to, you know, even having a contact phone line for you to call us. Yeah. So. We even have a group chat for guys who have ever been to a class with us. We're putting all of our students in a group chat that's a closed off group chat so you guys can communicate and network with each other. The same, there's also a closed off group chat network for the lifetime members. So if you are a lifetime member and you haven't gotten that link, send us an email or let us know so we can get that to you. Um, but we also want to ask what you guys want us to do reviews on. So if you have something that you want us to talk about or review, make sure you comment below. Or if you have any experience with the NX8, also let us know what your comments are. The biggest thing that we have within our community is that you guys commenting your information and your feedback in terms of providing knowledge, it's it's amazing. And it really benefits even us. Like, so in terms of, wow, that, we didn't know that. Like, hey, that's a good idea. We've gotten multiple, you know, good ideas or, you know, knowledge bombs from the comment section. So make sure you guys comment below. Um, but yeah, any final thoughts on this? Uh, on the scope itself, no, I think um, um, I think it's a great scope. Uh, it, does, it, uh, does it do everything right? I don't believe that there's an LPVO on the market that does do everything right. Yeah. Um, but as far as the couple of little cons that we found on it, um, to me, there it's I'm, I'm almost nitpicking mm -hmm. to a certain extent with that. Um, I, I really enjoyed the scope and so much that it's gonna it's gonna stay on that rifle. So nice. there's no point to move it. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, make sure you guys uh, go and check out our. Instagram and Spotify channel. We are actually very active on Spotify right now. So we're trying to push out a lot of podcasts. So we got a lot of cool guests, a lot of cool, a lot guests. of cool guests. So, yeah. um, it's, uh, sometimes it isn't going to necessarily be all gun content. Mm -hmm. So we got some cool, cool, cool guests coming up to talk about, uh, you know, maybe UFOs and things like that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but we just had, uh, our last guest, we talked about the gray man. So yeah. he is, I would, I would consider him a professional gray man. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was really cool. Mind-blowing. Yeah, mind-blowing stuff that he was talking about. But yeah. anyways, guys, make sure you guys go and uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow those different outlets. Also sign up for our newsletter on our website to get up-to-date information about what's coming down the pipe for Barrel and Hatchet. And also make sure you go out and get training. Make sure you're the asset, not the liability, and we'll see you on the next one.